Hello, I'm Megan Jordanson, and welcome to the PBS special on the Supreme Court case, Miranda v. Arizona. Today I'll be speaking to Mr. Myers about this case as an attorney. We sat in on the case and see how he felt about this case from 1966. Just for a brief description on this case in case you're first appearing of this. This case began in 1963, arrest in Phoenix, Arizona of resident Ernesto Miranda, who was charged with rape, kidnapping, and robbery. Miranda was not informed of his rights ahead of time before the police interrogation. During the interrogation, Miranda confessed to committing crimes which the police recorded. He told police about not finishing ninth grade and having a history of a mental instability. At trial, the per, um, prosecution's case contained his confession. Miranda was um, convicted to 20 to 40, um, 30 years for both rape and kidnapping. But he also um, appealed to the Supreme Court, stating that the police unconstitutionally obtained his confession. The court disagreed and went ahead with upholding the conviction. Now, here's Mr. Myers. Hello, thank you for having me today. As an honor to be, it's an honor to be here explaining this at Turner's case in Arizona. I heard you have some questions for me today. Lay them on me, and I'll try my best to answer them with the best of my ability. Thank you for taking your time. I know you're a very busy man. Well, my first question is, what happened to Ernesto Miranda after he spoke to the Supreme Court about his infringed rights and his statement of other kinds? Oh, what a redress question. It's a great way to start out. Where Ernesto was being interrogated, there was a full-type disclaimer which was signed by Miranda. He had full acknowledgement of legal rights, understanding any statement he had made may be used against him. He knowingly waived the right. Along two weeks later, as a preliminary hearing, Miranda was denied counsel. And even with a lawyer at trial, his confession was overruled and he got com um, convicted. Miranda spoke to the Supreme Court about the unrightful use of his confession and his case was re reviewed in 1966. The support in a 5-4 decision written by Chief Justice Earl Warren ruled the pro prosecution unable to introduce Miranda's confession as a part of evidence in criminal trials since the police had failed to inform Miranda of his right to an attorney self-inscrimination. The police violated the Constitution's amendment for a criminal the for a criminal. The right to um, refused to be witness against himself. Oh, okay, well, continue. The Fifth Amendment, which states, no person shall be held to answer for a, a capital or otherwise infamous crime, unless a presentment or indictment of a grand jury. There's other cases where this has changed. Wow, that's a major story turner. Well, I have a few more questions for you in the time we have. Beginning with, why do you think this case was important? And what interpretation or opinion did it create for you? Thank you anyway. The court maintained that the def defendant's right against self-incrimination the position was unchecked can lead to a government abuse. Depriving a defendant's right to an attorney is violating a fundamental right, which, according to the Chief of Justice, enables the defense to compel and tell a story without fear. Miranda was able to find a was able to have a double jeopardy case. This case was retried without his confession and convicted guilty again. That is completely understandable. Please continue. Well, while I was watching this case take place, I saw this man, how this man was feeling. He looked very upset when the judge gave him his sentence. I felt bad for Miranda. Later, when I heard he was not fairly sentenced, I knew there was something wrong instantly. He had the same, I had the same concurrence as his attorney when he was able to get retried for this case. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for coming in and giving our viewer bigger understanding of this case. See you next time.